But it's only embarrassing to Boris Johnson that he was caught trying to start a war and lying about Russia. It's only embarrassing to the government. It gives them a bloody nose. It makes it, you know, awkward for them to try and start a war because they can get away with that. That's, a, that's not a crime in the pantheon of crimes. I mean, they've been getting away with it for years, trying to frame Russia for the uh, election hacking, and then for Brexit, and then for whatever, and now Hungary election today. Of course, that'll be blamed on Russia as well. They'll be involved, won't they? Putin will be trying to get uh, Viktor Orban back in, even though he kn he's guaranteed to get back in, because well, pretty much there's no one else that's any good. But even recently in the Italian elections, Russia was blamed again, completely falsely. Uh, you know, the only thing that Russia hasn't been blamed for is Uranium One, which it was involved in. The actual conspiracy they are keeping rather stum about. So it's, it's inaccurate to say that Russia is completely blameless, like RT would have you believe. But it's also inaccurate to say that Russia is behind absolutely everything that happens. It wasn't behind Brexit, it wasn't behind Trump. It certainly wasn't behind the Skripal poisoning. And they've been caught now. They know that the chemical was made at Porton Down. They know that the staff at Porton Down were threatened. And they were told, you know, blame Russia, say it's Russia. And they've now come forward and said, you know, we know it's not Russia. We can't confirm it's Russia. Well, we know it's not Russia. It's not likely to be Russia, is it? Russian poison on Russian spy, you know, just before the uh, World Cup and just before a general election. Yeah, they're going to ruin their standing in the world, aren't they? Now, of course, we have to set up any event in the world to blame Russia because we have to now try and justify why we were blaming Russia in the first place. So we have to frame more lies, more false flags, and that's exactly what's happened in Syria. You know, right on cue. You know, two weeks ago, RT predicted that they would stage chemical weapons attacks to blame Assad and then justify bombing in Syria, because we're there unwelcome. You know, we're not welcomed. Assad has welcomed Russia in. They are working together to eradicate ISIS. We are working with ISIS to eradicate Assad's forces. We are working for regime change. They're working to change the actual country and make it safe. Assad is the kind of leader that makes, that makes Jews and Muslims and Christians live alongside each other happily, and that is what the globalists hate. So they want to turn Syria into the next Libya. Libya is now a slave market. Libya is the gateway for Africa and jihadists to go into Europe and destroy our people. And as the wars are ending in these countries in the Middle East, the globalists are pulling in their ISIS fighters and taking them to our countries. That is why we experience attacks every day. Allahu Akbar, nothing to do with Islam, says the media. The police says, don't speculate. Every time there's this template is followed again and again and again and we're told don't speculate don't blame islam even though allahu akbar was said weapons were found in the car bombs were in the back and isis claimed responsibility and the guy was oh i do believe he was either called muhammad or ahmed but either way don't blame islam for the islamists because islamism has nothing to do with islam don't you remember you know the propaganda is in overdrive right now they are planning a battle strategy in syria we haven't voted on going to Syria, but they are planning a bombing campaign already because we already know that this chemical attack is Assad, is Russia, isn't it? Just like in 2013 when it wasn't. You know, when that group, the OPCW or the UN <laughs> inspectors, whatever, they went in and they realised they found that it wasn't actually connected to Russia. It wasn't Assad's forces that were chemically that were using chemical weapons and it wasn't actually sarin gas, was it? Because it was a staged false flag and there wasn't actually sarin gas. But this time there just might be. I don't know enough to speculate about that. And I don't wish to speculate about that. But I do want to say that it was predicted by some news outlets. This is the perfect time for the fake, for the fake false flag to push to the war. That is what false flags are used for. And the news wants to keep you ignorant. Every time they get some establishment mouthpiece on the news to talk, like Malcolm Rifkind or whatever, he tries to basically not even entertain the idea that a false flag is a possibility. No, people don't do that. That's too conspiratorial. How could someone set up someone to blame the other side and then get away with it and divide and conquer? That would never happen. Of course it wouldn't. The extensive history of wars in this country, around the world, the, just everything, the Lusitania, Pearl Harbor, whatever. Burning of the Reichstag. 9-11. See, the mainstream media in the UK, the BBC and Sky News, they didn't bother to report in 2013 that the uh, investigators revealed that it wasn't actually Assad carrying out the uh, chemical weapons attacks. It wasn't Assad's forces. It was the so-called Syrian rebels, the so-called white helmets, the ones that are against ISIS. Sorry, the ones that are for ISIS, the ones that are joining ISIS. It gets so confusing, I can't even remember. And the propaganda is just there to say, Assad is bad, he's killing his own people. You know, Assad's a tyrant. Well, we all know Assad's a tyrant, don't we? We all know Putin's a tyrant. None of these people are tyrants. Assad was trained in Britain. He's a politician who was British trained and he knows how to run a country. He's basically the reason that globalism hasn't taken down the entire world right now because Syria is a pivotal point and he realises that. You know, he's better than Gaddafi. Gaddafi was there, he was trying to create a, a union in Europe away from the Rothschild banking central system, but he didn't do it. And then Hillary came in, we came, we saw he died and she took him out.
But Assad did not kill his own people, he does not kill his own people, he does not gas children. However, the globalists, the Soros-funded groups, the White Helmets, the terrorists, the Al-Qaeda-affiliated groups, Al-Shabaab, Al-Nusra and ISIS do. And Assad is fighting those forces. And Obama was arming those forces. And guess what we're doing in Britain with Theresa May's government and what David Cameron's government was doing? We were arming those forces as well to push for regime change in Syria. And it's still very much on the agenda. They want to use this false flag, this Syrian rebels gas attack to blame Assad and Russia so they can justify a carpet bombing campaign of Syria so they can carry on with regime change of that country because it's pivotal and they will never stop.